Here he is. Here he is. say about chocolate cake in the black box in your honor. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, my ladder. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's character. 
I knew I could, did not want to sell anything. <laughs> I knew I didn't want to manufacture anything. Uh, there were too many lawyers in my family. I couldn't stand the thought of becoming a lawyer. I'd faint in the operating room, so medicine was, was out. And um, so there were very few vocational opportunities. I knew I didn't have any talent, too. That was another uh, problem. So I decided to try teaching. And I had a backup. <laughs> no, that, that was it. I would try teaching. And I, I had a backup plan that if I didn't like it, I wasn't going to hang around waiting. I, my plan was to go to the headmaster's office and say, I'm sorry, this isn't working out. I'm going home. It's your problem. <laughs> and um, so I came and started teaching and almost immediately felt very comfortable in the profession and have never uh, considered any other profession. And there were two um, elements that uh, were deeply satisfying to me. One uh, was the students. Class of 1959, a little bit different from the students now. They were a little rougher. Uh, some of them came to school after working on the loading docks in the city of, of Newark. So it was a, a different kind of student. Uh, I felt very comfortable uh, with the students and immediately very comfortable with um, a number of my colleagues. I've always thought of the um, faculty in 1959 as the children of light and the children of darkness, so if I can use that sort of biblical imagery. And there were some rotten folks, including a neo-Nazi, uh, Dr. Fanaro. I've told some of you about Dr. Fanaro. Uh, a vicious man, really a vicious and prejudiced man. But there were some great teachers I felt very close to, and I've enjoyed the profession, and I don't know where uh, 50 years has gone. Really, really don't. 
And uh, I've, I'm speaking at um, excessive length. I apologize for that. We all have things to do. But <clears throat> I'll just add that at the beginning of my teaching career, I wanted to have a level of scholarship so that I could move into college teaching if that were my choice. And I will say of myself, I worked damn hard. And I always hated textbooks for the teaching of history. And there weren't collections of materials readily available as they are now. And I would stay up until all hours of the night editing original sources and essays that I thought were appropriate for the students. And then I'd go to bed, 1, one o'clock, 1.30. I'd go to bed, and I'd hand my edited material to Joan, <laughs> and she did all of the typing for me. So it's not just BS, if I can use that phrase, uh, to say that I've always felt very, very indebted to Joan for whatever success I've had as a as teacher. So I don't know what's happening to Newark Academy. Somebody should alert the headmaster. <laughs> are running amok here. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you want me to do it since I don't work here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can become a fashion icon. Somebody, oh, no. Somebody can yeah. just lay plates out, maybe. This is a Moroccan jalaba. Moroccan jalaba. <laughs> and fat. And fat. Right. Is that a straight ahead machete or is it called something else? Slow down, Scott. Slow down. Uh, I don't know if we're going to here. When I went many, many years ago, we said, Come get cake, please. <laughs> 